because that's what it's about. You know, I just, I, I know I've said this a lot when I've gotten up here, but that's, I, I really feel that's uh, the heart of God is to praise him because that's where life starts. That's where when you're going through things, I enjoyed the, the, the sermon pastor had uh, Wednesday. You know, when you praise him, even when you're in the pit, you know, you think about Joseph. You know, that, that's a hard place, man. Your brothers wanted to kill you and threw you in the pit. But, you know, throughout that time, everywhere that Joseph went, the Lord was with him. You know, the Lord made him to rise up. And that's what I really feel. It's, as you think about praise, you, you know, it's something that should be part of our life daily. Because that's what seems to move the heart of God. It really does. You know, we have those praises. And the thing about praise, one of the definitions is the offering of grateful homage in words or song as an act of worship. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? Appreciation, devotion, applause, and celebrate. Glorification. Think about that. Think about what God has done for you every single day. You know, sometimes it, it's, it's hard. Sometimes that's what the Bible talks about. Sometimes you have a sacrifice of praise. I'm telling you, there's sometimes it's rough. Oh, yeah. Brother, let me tell you, <laughs> it's rough. We, we had a, a, a Wednesday night we came and, and, and an oven, oven wasn't working the best. <laughs> and it started working good, but it wasn't working very good, you know. And you thought, man, that, that's, the, that's the worst time when you're cooking all this stuff. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you praise God. The house didn't burn down. I mean, you know, could have, <laughs> could have been a lot of other things in there. But you still praise God. Even if, you know, we, we, we talk about those things. Like, well, Lord, you know, my relationship isn't going or my family isn't going. But we're going to praise Him because we're going to praise God because God is always continually working in our lives. Yeah, we always remember that, you know, uh, when we describe Jesus in Revelation. You know, and, and he says he's the beginning and the ending. Well, that first, you got a start, you got an ending, and you got a middle. You know, and God is. The thing I love about it, he's a very present help right now when you need him. Not just off into the future. When I, you know, when I, when I need him out here, he's right now. You know, one of the things about praise, when, when they came out, uh, the Israelites came out of Egypt, and they crossed the Red Sea, and they was dancing to Exodus 15, one of the first verses they said after that is, The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God. Now, see, that's when you personalize things. This is my God. God belongs to me, and I belong to him. Amen. And, as, and I will praise him. It all comes down to those words, I will. So That's so powerful. I will. I will submit to God. I will do what he asks. You know, because sometimes when, when we look at what God wants us to do, He said, I don't know, man. It's pretty rough, you know. And, and sometimes we want to see the whole plan laid out. Then we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do the whole plan. It don't work that way. I, I was just thinking the other day about uh, my driving career. I know I'll probably share it some, but when I was in truck school in Missouri, there was 30 students in my class, and I don't know why the individual decided to say this. I, I still don't know why. I wish I'd ask him. But um, we're in class, and the instructor left the room one day, and this one individual, and I'm just doing my work. I remember he turned around and pointed to me, so it wasn't like there's anybody else he was talking about. I knew he was pointing to me. He said, there's one guy here who'll never make a living driving a truck. He'll never do it. And, you know, it was embarrassing in the whole room. Yeah. And I got to think, that's his opinion. Mm -hmm. That is not God's opinion. <laughs> See, that's the difference right there. Yeah. That is absolutely the difference. You cannot tell people. We ought to be positive in people's lives. That's right. You know, somebody wants to do something, want to contribute to society, you know, hey, brother, keep pursuing that. You know, pray about it, and I'll be praying for you. Amen. You know, because I, I do get individuals that come, and, and you can tell from the time they've been little, they've been told they're worthless. Mm -hmm. I, I hate that. Huh. I, I, some things... You know, people say, well, you shouldn't say hate. But I'm telling you, there's something that God hates. Right. He hates sin. Yeah. He hates seeing people be little like that. But when you say, this little kid come up, you know, it, it is some, uh, some, I heard some, oh, he's a little, he's a little devil. He's, he's not worth nothing. He'll never accomplish nothing. Well, how do you know that? That's right. That's right. How do you know that? Because we look at Esther and, and Mordecai told her, because that, you know, with, with all the stuff that's going on, who knows? Who knows when you come in the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows? Did you ever sit down and think why you were born for this time? Why you were born? Did you ever think about that? Why are you here right now? Because God has planned. That's right. And we always 
refer to Jeremiah 29, 11. I think it's just Amen. an awesome, awesome scripture because it's so powerful Amen. when you think about that. And this is out of God's worst translation. I, I love all the different translations because they, sometimes they bring out a little bit more. But it says, I know, and God's saying this, I know the plans that I have for you. Isn't that powerful? I have plans for you. Nobody's life's in vain. There's a reason you're here. We don't, we don't always know why it is, but I'm telling you, you can make a difference in somebody's life. I'm telling you, so many people need to be encouraged. So many teachers, people need to be saved. You know what? I'm praying for you. I'm believing God for great things. I don't take it a light when somebody comes up, would you pray for me? Yes, I'm going to pray for you. What do you have need of? I think that's so powerful when somebody is willing to come to you and say, would you pray for me, brother? Would you pray? I'm going through this hard thing. I need your help. And to thank God that your prayer goes above this ceiling all the way to the throne. Isn't that powerful? Amen. That God hears you. We, we yes. was, we was uh, hey, uh, yeah, he deserves that. God deserves that. God deserves that. Isn't it powerful? When, when God created the first family, Adam and Eve, what did God do with that first family? Isn't it interesting? When he created, he walked in the midst of the cool of the day. You know, he walked in, walked in the garden. He walked. They had a relationship. He was setting a standard right there. <clears throat> he, they walked and they talked. I'm sure Adam and Eve had a lot of questions to God. And, and just they, they spend that time. That's how you get to know somebody. That's what Paul said. Go to know him. Yeah. I think Paul knew him pretty good. You know, he understands. But there's always a deepness in God. And you spend time with them. You know, people say, well, Tim, how do you know the will of God? Because he gave you a manual. Let me tell you. Yeah. He gave me a manual. Right. If all else doesn't work, read the manual. Yeah, right. You know, people try to put stuff together and they have screws left over. I said, something ain't right. <laughs> Let me tell you, something ain't right. Refer to it. We got the new car. And I'm telling you what, man, I mean, just to, just to find simple things. You have to look it up in the manual because they hide stuff nowadays. Yeah. They want to make sure you take it back to the garage. Let me tell you. Yeah. You know, but what I'm saying, God has been giving us his word. And his word will help you get yeah. through it. Yeah. Everything you're going through. And God also brings people together. He brings people that will lock arms with you. And we're going to make it. Amen. That is so encouraging when you've got people that are with you. Yeah. You know, I, I uh, uh, one thing I really like to watch is track and field. I know if I share the same thing over, it's because it means a lot to me. Right. And I'm thinking it means a lot to you guys. But I always like track and field. I always loved it, especially when running 100 meters. You know, I always love that because they always focus in on the runner. You know, it may be Usain Bolt or whoever's running. But they focus in, and they're down in the blocks like this, yeah. and they focus in on them guys, you know, and, and they're concentrated, buddy. And, I, and I, one day I got to think, of, I wonder what they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. I really wonder. Well, when this is all over, you know, I'm going to have some cake and ice cream. And, you know, I wonder how my daughter's doing. I wonder how my kid. No, you know what they're thinking of? I mean, I can't be hungry, but you're thinking the next 100 meters. That's what they're thinking about. Yep. They're ready to go. And sometimes we get our eyes off of all the other, you know, we get on this stuff instead of the race we're on. Mm -hmm. right. And God wants us to stay in the race. Yeah. You know, an engineer, if you, uh, you know, you watch engineers go down the road, you know, I'm telling you, you watch them on the train track. I mean, they're looking, the ship, they're looking ahead, right? They got to keep that train on the track to get it anywhere. And driving a truck all those years, I cannot have a student just do this because there's other things that come on the side. If they're going down this, I'm guaranteed they're going to hit something. Okay? And I don't want them to hit nothing. you got to look around and see what's on it so you can make some decisions. And what God's saying, you know, we shouldn't be blindsided being the children of God. Because you know those thoughts. You can take them catch. You know when them thoughts ain't come along. I had a situation at work, you know, and I just, I just remember, you know, you remember how you used to act. That's when you know God has worked in your life. You remember how you used to act in this situation? I used to be an angry person, but let me tell you. I used to be so angry, you know, and you know, and you try to hold yourself back. You know, people say, Tim, you ought to count to ten. Well, it don't work either. Because you can go one to ten real quick. You know. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not it's not it's supposed to be one, two, three, you know, calm yourself. Buddy, I went from one to ten in about two seconds. And I still that don't work, you know, get your stress ball. The ball sitting there bouncing. No, it's got to be more from the inside out. When, when God works in the inside, some of those things you're not concerned about no more. 
Oh, they're, they're talking about you. So what? They talk about Jesus too. Okay? You know, I, I don't want to say this. I love Jesus because he wasn't into all this like chaos. What he was into was changing people's lives. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like it didn't bother him. You know, when people came to him, you know how some people, I'm telling you, you touch them at the wrong time, get their attention, buddy. You know, they don't want to be bothered with you unless it's their time. Yeah. You know, what? That, that's why I like people who, who was, you know, come, come to me. And, you know, when the kids came uh, to Jesus, you remember the disciples? They, they said, oh, you know, no, kids, you know, no, let them come. Let them come. Why? Because Jesus realized that once you get the kids young, you know, and, and you love them and show them the love of Christ, it's amazing what they can do. You start them out two, three, you know, that's why Sunday school is so valuable. But you start them out young and they love the Lord, they can serve the Lord for 50, 60, 70 years, right? Yeah, right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with If it's your deathbed, you receive Christ, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying, if you got a, a, a kid that loves the Lord, we, we grew up in the church. And I, I remember those times of praying. I remember those times of worship. I, re, I remember those people who came forth and shared what God has done for them. And it was real. Amen. And they prayed for the kids on the bus. You know, they, they would take, and that's what it is. I'm going to finish this. Uh, I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord. It's a declaration. Right. They are plans for peace and not disaster. Plans to give you a future. Yeah. I love that. You got a future, ladies and gentlemen. You got a great future. Because uh, the future is filled with hope. That's powerful. You got something to look forward to. You know, it's not here. The bus don't stop here. It's moving on. And you know what? We're going to think one day we're going to be in glory. You know, one day. But on that journey, it's how we decide to, to view that journey. And every day, even if it doesn't go well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to praise God. You know, when it goes well, we're still going to praise God. Amen. What tends to happen, we live a Christian life, and we fluctuate so much. Yeah. You know, buddy, when things are going bad, you know, we thank God for saving us. So then what happens is we pray a little bit more. You know, when God, and that's why a pastor said one time, a pastor said, he said, that's why people, some got to stay in trouble all the time. That's the only time they ever pray. And God doesn't want that. What he wants is a constant relationship. So if I'm down here in the valley, I'm still going to pray. When things are going high, I'm still going to pray. So I have a consistent walk with God every day. Amen. So that when I'm in trouble, I don't have to introduce myself again. Yeah. Hey, God, remember me? I talked to you about six months ago. You know? But I kind of forgot. <clears throat> we're not going to forget God. And God's not going to forget us. You know why? Because we're engraving on his hand. And brother, every time you look at him, that's my son and daughter. I can see him. Amen. Think about that. The Bible talks about him holding our hand. How tender is that? Like you hold your hand walking across the street. Boy, it's tender. He carries those young. Think about how good God is. Yeah. And today, this morning, that's what we're going to uh, praise him for. We're going to praise yeah. God for his goodness. Yeah. So we're going to open this testimony up. Service up and remember one thing today. Remember to praise God no matter what. Amen. I will bless the Lord. So 34 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What does that mean? At all times. At good times? Yeah. yeah. Is that bad times? In between times? All times. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If his praise is continually in my mouth, Nothing else should come out. <laughs> Let me tell you, you stub your toe, you have this happen. Let me tell you, probably good not to be around some people when they stub their toe. Because I'm telling you, you know, it sounds like a foreign language. Let me tell you, coming out of there. You know, brother, let me, let me tell you. You know, stuff, stuff doesn't go right. It's language coming out. Where'd you learn to speak at, brother? Let me tell you that. Huh? But, you know, but one thing we got to do is really... Praise the Lord all the time. Amen. Seven times a day, eight times a day. No matter what happens, it's amazing when you praise the Lord, it refocuses you on Him. Yeah. That's what happens. If it's a bad day, sometimes it's days at work that just it just seems like it's just nothing goes right. Somebody's raising their voice at you and all that stuff. You know, you just refocus. Amen. Say, why am I here? Because God put me here. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Yeah. When Jesus says, we just talked about this, when Jesus said, we're going to cross the lake, you know, and we're going to go to the other side. I guarantee you that boat's going to get to the other side. That's right. You know, and you have to worry about it. He's going to get you to the other side. Amen. And that's what we have to do is depend on 
God. Yes. Depend on Him. It's not in our own strength. Right. We gotta depend on God every day. And it starts, I really believe that dependence starts with praising Him. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we're gonna open this up. Because we got a lot to praise God for. Amen. Some of them. Yes. Um, I've been battling, well, I, I have a sleep apnea, so I use a nasal machine every night, mm -hmm. IPAP. And I've been battling all summer as far as shortness of breath. And, and uh, you know, they, the Medicare says that I don't qualify for oxygen, and I have the oxygen assisted machine. Mm -hmm. And they took the oxygen. No. Anyway, um, I went and I had the sleep study redone. And they gave me back my my card and stuff, and they I put it in the machine, and then one day I, I woke up and I went to work, and I'm walking around, I'm walking faster and faster, and I'm like, what's going on here? I said, I'm not, you know, I'm trying. To, what am I going to do first? A prayer. <laughs> and so I'm like, this is all right. They must have did something to that machine. You know, I don't have any more shortness of breath. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. I went to the doctor and I said, I, you know, I don't know what you did. I said, but that other chip or whatever that you gave me, um, it makes a big difference. He said, we didn't do anything. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sat there and laughed. I said, okay. Well, All right, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for healing me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. circumstances of life, you know when it's God. That's right. You you absolutely know. And, and, and you know, people, the doctors, we, we appreciate technology God's given them, but he's higher than all that. Yeah. And I tell you, he can heal lives, he can change lives, and that's a great testimony right there. Yeah. Power. Yeah. Someone else. Yes. Uh, Cindy's uh, still at home uh, with the uh, breathing issues. Uh, she's uh, gradually getting better. I know the Lord's hand was on her. Um, <clears throat> and I took her in last Monday, uh, Monday or Tuesday. Everything was going to blow her last week. Um, she called out to the lung specialist out on the west side there and stuff. They said they can get her in December. And uh, my granddaughter was there, and she was kind of upset because, you know, what are we going to do, Grandpa? We're going to take her into the hospital and stuff like that. And, I said, Shannon, you're just going to have to be quiet and let me do what I do at work. I'm on vacation. I'm going to do, I'm going to handle this like I was at work. So anyway, call them in at 10 o'clock and dealing with these guys the way I needed to deal with them. Cindy was able to go in at 3 o'clock that afternoon. Absolutely. All right? Yeah. So sometimes you got to hit the, let the rubber hit the road and smoke them up a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, we just did that. Deal, they were in there. Um, I had to improvise on her oxygen machine getting it out there because we don't have a portable. Um, so I had to throw the generator in the back of the truck and run an extension cord up to the machine for her to get out there. You know, you got to do what you got to do. That's right. Anyway, um, we're finding out that her oxygen levels are good. Yeah. But she still can't breathe. So we're seeing side effects, and I'm not going to name it and claim it, of COPD. Um, immediately, I was uh, reading uh, Kyla. Uh, Kayla's testimony from out there at Bethel and stuff where people have been getting healed from COPD. Mm -hmm. So we're claiming that for Cindy right now yeah. that she gets totally healed of it. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. the coughing, the coughing, yeah. the constant coughing is it's getting less as each night goes on. There's been a few nights that there was no sleep, but the Lord is restoring that sleep now and, and things are getting better. But um, she's getting frustrated because she can't drive, she can't go anywhere. Um, she's getting cabin fever. Um, mm -hmm. So, but I just pray and, uh, and standing with the Lord this morning, just climb upon her. We've got people from coast to coast praying for her. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Lauren Diving, who's with uh, Youth Outreach up in Minnesota and has been here a couple times for Tom Stammon, she's over with Heidi Baker right now in Africa, and they're praying for her too. Okay, so, whatever it takes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I guess as, I, as Myron's talking, he's talking, you know, uh, we deal with the five senses. That's all we, we, we know that Jesus deals with the unseen, which is yes, not exactly. part of the, part of the
part of uh, the equation of the five senses that we see. So I'm so thankful we have a God who knows and sees and, and deals with the unseen. Evelyn went through surgery absolutely phenomenal, better than the doctors even Thank expected. Recovering oh, with pooping at 90 years old, that's, that's wonderful. Yes. A lot of times you don't when you have a hip replacement, it's tough. Um, <laughs> So we thank the Lord for that, for sure. Uh, my sister-in-law texts me. She goes to the doctor on Tuesday for blood work and just asks me again. We pray that no signs of cancer. All of her markers see zero. Uh, Jayla is dealing with congestion, really, really bad, just really fussy, as well as cutting teeth. So just please, you know, her mom doesn't really know what to do with her. So I have her most of the time here. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. <laughs> She'll learn. That's right. uh, but pray for her anyhow, and that whole situation, yes. that the Lord would just mm -hmm. help her dad. He's kind of using this baby as a pawn, and that's just the worst thing that could yeah. ever happen. Right. He put this child in such a situation that's already right. so early. So, mm -hmm. you know, we know God again is the God of the unseen. I've right. I, I spoke to this boy so many times and kind of given him Jeremiah 29 11 mm -hmm. to try to have to encourage him. So I'm just, I just keep declaring those things to, to his life when every time he's stupid and ignorant, you know, what can you do? I declare again the unseen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's all like it is. Yeah, John's working six days a week, 12 hours. He's exhausted, but he gets up at 10 o'clock to watch the baby every day. So he gets about four or five hours sleep a day. So she's sleeping in, pray for him and his body to have strength. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, this is so much, but yesterday somebody called me and they were just having a lot of health issues and, and just um, <coughs> came over and I gave them a response. His name is Don. Um, my daughter called me about 11 o'clock last night, unable to walk and I had to go get her undressed. She's 28 years old. <laughs> Help her get in the bathtub. She's just having a lot of pain in her legs, and she doesn't know what's going on. Literally, she crawled to the tub in some Epsom salt water at 11 o'clock at night. And it's like, well, I wish she was little. I could just pick you up, but I can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, my daughter in Oregon, her, her boyfriend needs Bob. And, and so, I mean, our needs are great. Everybody's needs are great. But God's, God's greater, so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. to that situation where they're so desperate they walk into the stuff and then the enemy comes in later and tries to uh, make them feel like they were stupid. You know, yeah. to bring discouragement on himself. So just buy that discouragement off right. and let him know yeah. that there's a finished work that needs to be done yes. once he's with us. So Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. We'll do that. Yes. Yeah, I just want to
they shouldn't run. You see it from God's perspective. And that never left me. And, and I thought, man, if they can see from this perspective, we can see how much easier life would be if we could look from up here, down. And I thought, well, that works good, but the players only see things from hell and high. You know, they're down here, and they're seeing it from here. But I said, we've got to keep God's perspective on things because that's what keeps us focused. It said, just because this situation happened, don't mean it's the end. You know, that just got, you know, people say, well, yeah, you'll never mount this, you never do this. And I said, wow, wait, 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 wait. We got a God who speaks the other one. We got a God who says, I will make it because he's going to be with me. The Bible says, you know, God's never going to forsake you. Think about it. And the disciples, God was working with them. And it also says, for with God, all things are possible. It doesn't say some things or a few things. It said all things. So therefore, that's the reason I can make it. Because God's going to be with me. Let me tell you, when you have the creator that's on your side, hey, you can't lose. You cannot lose. It may, it may look bad down here, but let me tell you, this is not all there is. Hey, there's a whole nother world. And one day you're going to spend, we, we was coming to church and we got the CD and, you know, I can only imagine that song. I, I think that's such a powerful song. Because what are you going to do in the presence of God? We're well, going to fall down and just think how holy the God is. And he cares about you. Oh, to, to me, that's just such a such an awesome time to, to, to be spending present with the Lord. But we can get some of that down here. Why? Because God's with us down here, too. And so we can get in that. We can worship him and get caught up in it. Because that's what it's about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Father God, those individuals that need a healing touch from you today, we know that you are the God that heals. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You are the God that delivers. You are the God that can change a life. And Lord, it's all about you, Lord. Let us never forget, never forget where you brought us from. Father God, we ask you to bless this congregation. We ask you to bless those that are traveling. Bless those that couldn't be here today, Lord, that you would bless their families. Thank you that we had a chance to spend time with our families this week because it's all about family. God, you instituted a family. That's what it's about. And you was willing to come down and walk with them and spend time with them. That's what it's about. Oh, like Paul said, oh, to know him. Oh, hallelujah. We want to know you. We want to praise you. We want to give you the glory every single day. 
because if it wasn't for you, Lord, well, we could be lost. If it wasn't for you, our thoughts could be way out there. But, Lord, because of you, because of you, our lives are different. Because of you, we have a heart that can serve you, a heart that can be filled with your peace. Hallelujah. Oh, you said, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Believe in me. And that's what we are here today, to believe in you. And we lift you up today. Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit just to rain down in a mighty way. And Lord, just consume this place. Hallelujah. Back in the time of Solomon. Hallelujah. That, 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 that there, were, there was so much that they couldn't minister. There, there was just so much glory. So much glory. Hallelujah. That your glory would rain down today. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you so much for the sacrifice that you took our place on that cross. And you are not finished with us. Oh, we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word that can change a life forever. And we praise you in your wonderful holy name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 All right. On December the 11th at 7 p.m. here, Eastern Gate House of Prayer, all who can join us. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome time to be able to praise, praise God in that setting. Amen. Soup, uh, dinner. It's December 13th after the service. So all invited. A sign-up sheet in the foyer back there. All right, let's speak the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body function to the perfection to which God created it to function, and I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the power for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Come up, brother. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for another blessed day. We truly are a blessed and highly favored church family because of you, Lord. We thank you for the gifts of love, grace, and mercy, and salvation that you freely offer us. We pray that you guide us. Yes, sir. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother Tim. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, y'all turkey down yet? Y'all freed up? Yep. Y'all freed up now? Those are the new crazy that's all this year. God will see your wobble. God. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so good. 
get some more wawa and does. <laughs> Y'all ready to stand? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Mrs. Sally stepping to the plate. Yes, we are still looking for two more <coughs> vocalists, ladies, an alto and a soprano. Hallelujah. Tammy and Jody are uh, uh, tied up today, but uh, they'll be back soon. I know Jody will be. Tammy's caught in the, the Christmas rush at work, so just pray for her. Um, yeah, just pray for her. So in the meantime, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Every voice in this place sing hallelujah. Praise our God, seek his face, sing hallelujah. Every tribe, every tongue, sing hallelujah. Everything, everyone, sing hallelujah. For the Lord our God is a righteous King, sing hallelujah. For the Lord our God is enthroned on high, sing hallelujah. He has rescued us with his strong right hand, sing hallelujah. He has filled our lives with his faithful love, Sing hallelujah. Here we go. Praise them on the instrument. Every voice in this place, sing hallelujah. Praise our God, seek his face, sing hallelujah. Every tribe. Every time, sing hallelujah. Every me, everyone, sing hallelujah. For the Lord our God is a righteous king, sing hallelujah. For the Lord our God is enthroned on high, sing hallelujah. Young and old, rich and poor, sing hallelujah. High and low, exalt the Lord, sing hallelujah. For the Lord our God is a righteous King, sing hallelujah. For the Lord our God is enthroned on high, sing hallelujah. strong right hand, sing hallelujah, he has filled our lives with his faithful love, sing hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, Lord. Y'all sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, for 
Oh, the Lord our God is enthroned on high. Sing hallelujah. He has rescued us with a strong right hand. Sing hallelujah. He has filled our lives with his faithful love. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Thanks to the Lord for he is good. He love endures forever. He made the heavens and the earth. His love endures forever. He made the sun to give us the light. His love endures forever. The sun and the moon to govern the night. We love and do it forever. We celebrate your faithfulness. Your mighty hand will deliver us. You're my redeemer. You are my king. And all creation sing. Give thanks to the Lord. Woo! He delivered the children of Israel. His love endures forever. He led them through the barren land. His love endures forever. With an outstretched arm and a strong right hand. His love endures forever. He led them into the promised land. He love endures forever. We celebrate. Your faithfulness, your mighty hand will deliver us. You're my believer, you are my king, and all creation sings. Give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah! We celebrate, we celebrate. Your faithfulness, your mighty hand will deliver us. You're my redeemer, you are my king, and all creation sings, give thanks to the Lord. Because His love endures forever, His love endures forever, His love endures forever, His love endures forever, His love endures forever. Forever, in love and do forever, in love and do forever, in love and do forever. Hallelujah, Lord. Your Thank goodness, you, Lord, and the things in the finished Thank work, Lord, that you have done. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord.
thankful, Lord, for your grace, for your goodness, for your mercy. You are a great and a mighty God. Yes. Hallelujah. There's none like yes. you, Lord. Yes. We bless your name this morning. Yes, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for your mighty acts, for your works. Hallelujah, Jesus, for showing yourself mighty on our behalf, Lord. We bless you and praise you and thank you in the matchless and exalted name of Jesus. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday school kids, you can fail. Praise the Lord. Thanks, worship team. Thank you all. For great job. Thank all of you for being here today. This Sunday after Thanksgiving, obviously a lot of people 
out of town and <clears throat> with family and so forth. So praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. I love that last psalm because it's just a perfect introduction to what the Lord has given me uh, to speak today. Praise the Lord to share with you. Amen. Praise God. You know, but ever uh, you know, life is a is, uh, it really is a trip. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, or maybe a journey would be a better word, but it's a trip too. Praise the Lord. Good judgment, you know, comes from experience. And experience, well, that comes from bad judgment. Praise the Lord. So the Lord has it covered on all sides. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get right into the Word of God this morning. Praise the Lord. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, a little late, but thanks to the Lord for all of his goodness. Praise God. Second Corinthians, uh, Sheila. Chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my, sake, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I, all of us have read those over the years, you know, and whenever I think about them, uh, beyond just the, the superficial, the surface, they don't make a lot of sense in the natural. Because... We, we tend to look at weakness and, and power in certain ways. Weakness equals a lack of power in the, the natural mind. And the logic of that seems to be obvious, but here's the exciting part. It's also dead wrong. Amen. According to the biblical perspective on weakness. For, for Christians, the question is, well, let me put it this way. The equation for us is actually that weakness does not equal lack of power. In fact, the whole purpose of personal weakness is the opportunity to experience God's power. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, there are, there's times in all of our lives when the, the truth that God is trying the hardest to teach us is the truth that we resist the most. Praise the Lord. Chapter 90, or verse 90 said, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. It's enough. It's more than enough. It's all you need. Praise the Lord. My strength for my strength. His grace is sufficient for us because his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Amen. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Praise God. Amen. This is, it's more than it looks like. It's more than it seems to us. On the surface, it appears to just be encouraging us, amen, to admit that uh, we're weak and so that God can be glorified. Amen. It makes sense. And most of us figure, well, you know, I, I must be glorifying God constantly because I have so many weaknesses. Amen. But that's not the end of Paul's thought. Verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen? So, uh, praise the Lord. It, it's, uh, Paul didn't just say, hey, uh, be content with weakness, as in, uh, well, I'll, I'll endure it because I can't do anything about it anyhow. Right? He takes pleasure... That, that word pleasure uh, is the same Greek word 
that's used in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 5, if we can look at that. It's the very same word, amen, that's used in Matthew 17, 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Very same word that Paul uses, amen, when he says, I take pleasure, amen, right? Same word used in Luke chapter 3, verse 22. Exact same word, same meaning, same application. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud shaped like a dove upon him bodily, descended bodily. Let me back up here. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Praise the Lord. So it's the same word regarding his weaknesses that the Father uses, amen, at Jesus' baptism, and at his transfiguration. Well pleased. Amen? So how could Paul or anybody else be well pleased with weaknesses? How could Paul say, when I am weak, then I'm strong? Because weakness and strength are opposites. I mean, it's like saying, uh, when I'm hot, I'm cold. When I'm happy, I'm sad. So this is either completely stupid or some crude uh, attempt at manipulating language or a truth that's so revolutionary that it'll change your life forever. Praise God. We, the church I'm talking about, have blocked the main artery that sends God's power into our lives. Grace. Somebody besides Darlene saying, mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What would you give to experience the real resurrection power of Christ in your life, in your mind, in your heart, uh, on your job, in, in your relationships, in, in ministry? In, in the, I mean, what would we give to really experience it? What if the path to true power, what if the way to real strength isn't trying harder to be powerful, but giving up the attempt to be powerful altogether. Rest in His strength, in His power. What if God's power could be demonstrated through your life, not by trying desperately to overcome your weaknesses, but by admitting them and getting out of God's way so He can demonstrate His power through those very weaknesses? Praise the Lord. What if your weaknesses, whatever they are, amen, is the very vehicle through which God has always wanted to reveal himself to you? Guess what? That's exactly what the Bible teaches us over and over and over. We look at weaknesses and we call it shame. We want to judge and critique and so And God says, it's your weakness that I'm looking for because it's the only avenue through which I can present my power. Praise God. The problem lies in us because we believe weakness is bad and power is good. So I, want to, I just want to show you a few scriptures here. Uh, I, I've actually blocked out a bunch of them already because I had so many of them, but I'm just going to, I want to give you a few of these in, in uh, the Old Testament. Look at Deuteronomy, uh, Sheila, Deuteronomy 8, 16, and 18. Praise the Lord. Amen. Deuteronomy 8, 16 through 18. We, you know, we approach the Bible so often from a, you know, from a religious perspective and uh, from a doctrinal, what we think of as a doctrinal uh, basis, when in fact this is a personal letter from God to you. He really wasn't trying to develop a religion here. He was trying to develop a relationship with us. And the only way that can happen, as it's already been said here this morning, is through us trusting and loving God. Praise the Lord. These lights are just killing me for some reason this morning. Praise the Lord. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end? And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of my hand 
hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, and that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. What's the covenant? It's grace. It's the love of God. It's the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 11. 2 Chronicles 14 and 11. Just so you know, I'm not trying to develop my own doctrine here. I'm just reading what the Bible says. Praise the Lord. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let no man prevail against thee. Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, we're getting more than that. Praise the Lord. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit it. Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles 20, 17. Not, not 11, I'm sorry. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Praise God. One more from the Old Testament, Zechariah 4, verses 6 and 7. For some reason, I, my eyes are freaking out here. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Praise the Lord. So now let's look at the new covenant. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 27 through 29. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. One more, just cover this. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 through 34. Hebrews 11, 32 through 34. Praise God. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, also in Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. They wax valiant in flight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Amen? So God wants us to embrace the very weaknesses that we want to hate. Amen? And realize that it's through these weaknesses that he wants to demonstrate his power to us and through us. The very weaknesses we try to avoid and try to deny and try to hide from is the very vehicle through which God wants to manifest in our lives. Praise the Lord. Weakness is not failure. It's simply weakness. And it's standard equipment on all humans. Praise the Lord. Remember, weakness and power existed simultaneously in Paul. Amen? And the same is true of Jesus. Both weakness in his humanity, 
and power in his divinity. They existed at the same time in Christ. John chapter 5, uh, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. John 14, uh, verses 9 through 12. John 14, 9 through 12. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Praise the Lord. Believe me that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. I, I just propose to you, one of the reasons we don't see the works of God manifested in our lives as much as God tells us that we would, is because we're depending too much on our strength, or on our spirituality, or on our religiosity, than we are in his power and our weakness. Amen? We think that, the, you know, the giants of faith, you know, well, look, the truth is we all got the same anointing. We all have the same Holy Spirit. We all have the same fullness of the Godhead dwelling in us bodily. The difference is some people have learned to embrace their weaknesses so that God's power can flow through them instead of trying to deny their weaknesses and declare themselves to be powerful. Praise God. That's not what Jesus did, and it's not what Paul did. Jesus he lived his life as a human being and recognized his weakness as a human, and so he relied totally on the power of God to operate through him. And he said, if we'll do that, then we'll have greater works than he had because God's strength is made great and mighty in our weakness when we submit, amen, to those weaknesses. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to realize let me, let me just say, tell you a little story. The Amazon River is the largest river in the world. You say, what's this got to do with anything? Well, give me a minute. It is the largest r river in the world. It has, the, the, the mouth of the Amazon River is 90 miles wide. Praise the Lord. And there is more water in that, the mouth of that river than the Yangtze the Mississippi, and the Nile all put together. There is so much water in the, in the current, amen, that it, when it flows out, it can be detected, the current of that river can be detected 200 miles out into the Atlantic Ocean. That's a lot of water and a lot of power. Now, ironically, Ancient sailors, there's also, when you get into the southern Atlantic there, there is a, there's a calm there. There's very little wind. So the, in ancient days, when the sailors used masted sail ships, they would often linger there for weeks waiting on a wind to come. So they'd be just hung up out there. There's no, nowhere to go. And so they would often... die of thirst. I mean, you don't think of that, but you can't drink seawater. Amen. And so they would be stuck there for, for weeks at a time, and they'd run out of water. And it's, the story is told where sailors that came from South America who were familiar with that area would go by, and they'd see this ship sitting there. And as they drift closer and closer to one another, they'd ask them, what's your problem? And they'd say, please, can you, can you give us some water? We're dying of thirst. And they they the people in the ships would call back to them and say, hey, just drop your bucket in the water. You're in the mouth of the Nile. They thought they were out in the middle of the ocean and there was no fresh water, and the fact was they were right smack in the middle of this freshwater river and didn't even know it. So all this water is flowing out there to them, and, and, and they're not even aware of it. And it's like the church. There's no shortage of God's power. We are filled 
with God's power. All we need to do is drop the bucket, amen, and take a drink. All we need to do is realize that God will never leave us or forsake us. He has empowered us to do greater works than He's done. All we have to do is believe it. Instead of judging ourselves and measuring ourselves in our own strength, recognize our weakness is what gives God the opportunity to flow through us. Our humanity is the very thing that God wants to use. And I've already told you, every human is standard operating equipment is flawed. Amen. Has weakness. Praise the Lord. Man, you're quiet out there this morning. Hallelujah. Maybe my ears are getting as bad as my eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. So the problem is we don't know we have access because we're measuring our access based on us instead of on God. We're measuring God's ability to flow and to have power based on our little humanity rather than his vast Godhead. Praise the Lord. Amen. We think it's some spiritual secret that we have to learn. Amen. And, and until we learn it, we can't, you know, actually understand what it is that God's trying to do. Unless we reach the status of Moses, you know, we, ever, we can't ever do anything for God. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. The scripture we all know, we quote it, we, I, I, we've talked about it even here just in recent weeks, praise the Lord, but it's a powerful scripture, but the problem is we think of it as being just poetic or uh, wishful thinking. When in fact, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that rest in the Lord, shall renew their strength, and they'll mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk, amen, and not faint. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a promise of God's power to the weak, to those who are tired and wore out. If you've never, amen, reached the end of yourself, amen, this is grace we're talking about. Amen? If, 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 unless we get to the place where we're weary of trying to do it ourselves, we'll never experience the power of God. Jesus didn't pull himself up by his own bootstraps. He called out to God in complete dependence on his heavenly Father. Though he was God, he gave up the independent use of his Godhead, of his divinity. Amen? All of those attributes of God, he set them aside so that he would face the world, amen, on our terms and show us how to appropriate the power of God. God has already displayed his power. In your, if you're a believer, God has already released power into your life. First of all, amen, if you're born again, God displayed his power in your salvation. Amen? By grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody's got the power to save themselves. Only God can save. It's only in our weakness that we appropriate the power of God. Initially with salvation and everywhere from then on. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 and 19 again. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 19. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So we're not saved because we uh, finally figured out Amen. Some uh, deep, dark secret of God, or that we've understood the totality of God, we're saved because God interrupts our blindness, our weakness, our antic, uh, antagonistic attitudes towards Him, amen, and draws us to Him. It's Him that does it all. We just submit. We just rest in His promise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Theologically, it's called efficacious grace. Amen? And grace that is effective, in other words, and irresistible. Whoever the Spirit draws is coming. 
Amen? And if you're here, it's because God has drawn you. And he drew you so that he extends, so that he may extend grace to you. Praise the Lord. It's irresistible. It draws us to God, and it draws us to salvation. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. If you don't think you're special, you need to reread the Bible because you are highly favored. You are special. You are, as Tim said earlier, the apple of his eye, the love of God's heart, what he is focused on. He has engraven us in the palms of his hand. I preached a message a few weeks back. I got a few tattoos. Amen. But when I was getting tattoos 40, 50 years ago now, I forget sometimes how old I am, but about 50 years ago, you got a tattoo because it was something you were committed to. Yeah, you all seen the ones with Mary and the heart through it, and then it's zigzag, and then there's Jane under that one. And so I don't have those. I don't have, but I do have a mom tattoo because I knew she wasn't going to leave. And I couldn't leave her. I was committed. She's committed. Amen. And then I have a, a, a Marine Corps tattoo, anchor, globe, eagle, you know. And uh, why? Because I was committed, and so I got the tattoo, right? God is committed. And so what he says is, I've tattooed. I've, I've got a tattoo of you in my hands that always reminds me. Now, I'm getting old, and there's wrinkles where there didn't used to be wrinkles, and I look at the, and the tattoos that fade a little bit, but I can still see that Marine Corps emblem. I can still see Mom, although it looks like wow to other people. <laughs> I'm looking at it from the other one. <laughs> exactly. But I'm saying we make a commitment, and we want to remind ourselves of that commitment. Not that God is forgetful, but that's what he's telling us. I am so committed to you that I've got your name tattooed on my body for me, not only me to see, but for anybody else who cares to look to see that you are what I am committed to. We think it's about us being committed to God. None of us are capable of fully committing to anything. Only God does. Amen? And he holds us in the palm of his hand so that we can't jump out even when we want to. Even when we feel like we'd bail, God doesn't allow us to bail. Amen? Because of his commitment to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God had to literally give you life and cause you to be born again. God had to do that himself. You, could, you didn't do anything other than submit to it. Amen? You had no strength to do it. I heard this before, and you may have heard it too, but it's worth repeating. How did, you know, when the shepherd leaves the 99 and he goes out and gets the one lamb, what? That's, a, that's typical. That's God showing us his love, that he comes out to seek us out and to, and to, to, to bring us back. What, let me ask you, what did that lamb do to get saved? Yeah, no, all it did was submit. All it did was allow the shepherd to pick him up and carry him back to the flock. The lamb had nothing to do other than agreeing or allowing the shepherd to pick him up and take him back. That's, all we, that's the only thing we can say that we've done in terms of our relationship with God. We said, yes, Lord. And he did everything else. God works in such a powerful way on our behalf. Think about it. Answered prayer. We hear it all the time. This is a small church, but we hear answered prayer. Every service, there's hardly a service goes by that we don't hear about somebody that's been healed, somebody's been delivered, somebody's had a financial breakthrough, somebody's had a relationship restored. Something's always going on. That's showing you the power of God that's already operating in our lives. Amen? Hey, praise God. He, when you get direction, when you get healing, even when you have hope where there shouldn't be any hope, it's God. That's coming from God. His strength made perfect in our weakness. This is, this is what the relationship's all about. It's a one-way thing. It's all about God. We all God asks of us is to believe. Believe it and receive it. Believe that He is a good God. Believe that He is a loving God. Believe that He is a God who will never forsake you, who will never turn His back on you no matter how many times you turn your back on Him. Praise God. If we can learn how to intimately 
interact with God, we'd understand how much God loves us, how much God sees us as individuals, and then we could experience firsthand the power of God operating in our lives. Forget about everybody else for a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm not being rude. I'm just saying, think about you and God, because that's the way God thinks about you. Now, God has the capacity to love everybody identically. But don't worry about trying to get your mind around that. Just think about the fact that he loves you totally and gave himself for you explicitly and particularly. Amen? Not for, yes, he, God so loved the world that he came. But if I'd been the world, if I was the only one in the world, he'd have come for me. In fact, in the mind of God, that's exactly what he did do. He came for me. He came for me because he had me tattooed, amen, on his body saying, I'm committed to this guy. I love him. I'm going to do everything I can to make him a success. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, 18 and 19. We need to learn how to relax. We need to learn how to rest in the goodness and the favor of and the love of God, and quit trying to judge ourselves and critique ourselves. That's why Paul says, you know, it's not wise to measure yourselves among yourselves and judge yourselves. Look, forget it. It has nothing to do, amen, with our relationship with God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. This is the prayer that Paul prayed for us. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you would know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Not our power, his power. He, Paul is saying, I hope I can get, it, get you to a place where you can comprehend this is not about you. It's about him. Amen. Get a revelation, amen, of God's love, of God's the, the depth of the riches of his glory and his power, amen, toward you. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Man, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, a lot of times, I, I mean, I grow, you know, learning a lot of this through, you know, di different religious systems and so forth, but, man, I'm telling you, if, if I'd have known 35 years ago what I know now, ain't no telling what God might have been able to do. But I still thought it was about how much, I'm not saying we shouldn't pray. I'm not saying there aren't even times that you may want to fast or, or do other specific things for God. Not really so much for God, but for you to connect with God. But you don't have to do any of it. That's about us. That's not about God. God doesn't measure his love towards me based on how much I sacrifice, his love for me has already been determined by how much he already sacrificed. He just wants me to receive the results and the benefits of that sacrifice. That's what honors God. That's what shows God. I'm not trying to replace him or try to measure up to him. I'm just trying to receive all that he purchased for me. I just want to have all of the benefits that he so wanted me to have. Amen. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. What part of sufficient don't we understand? It's enough. It's all you need. You don't need any more. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Let me suggest this. Grace, you don't get the benefit of grace unless you recognize that it comes to the weak. The more religious we are, the more we're trying to develop our own spiritual muscles and strength, and the less the power of God flows. Because that power comes by grace. It doesn't come by what we do to earn it. Amen? For his strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly. This is Paul, writer of two-thirds of the New Testament, one of the most powerful uh, apostles uh, uh, that ever lived, greatest revelation, miracles, signs, and wonders, but he says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's what God wants you to experience. His power dwelling in you constantly. 
always, not just when we get into the right atmosphere or not when we're in the right church service or when the right song is sung or the right prayer is prayed or the right person prays the prayer, but constantly, always, confident, he's with me, he's for me, who can be against me? Assurance of his power, assurance of his presence. Now, we think, you know, we do something that, that, that religiously may be taboo. So we think God's hiding somewhere. He leaves, and then after we get our act together, then he comes back. Oh, okay, so you're done with that, are you now? Okay, so I can be here with you? He'll never leave us or forsake us. Our spirit, who we really are, who is going to live eternally, is perfect. It's just like Jesus, without sin. I know. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense in the natural because we know what we do. We know who we are. We know and we judge everything based on culture, you know, religion, all, all sorts of other things. We base everything on that. So we look at ourselves and we say, oh, and that, ooh, you didn't measure up there. God walks around with me like this all the time. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I'm pleased with him because when he's weak, I'm strong. It shows my power in his weakness. It reveals my true identity and character in my weakness. It shows him to be a good God, a loving God, a God who cannot forsake me, who is not within his ability to ever say no to me. See, that sounds egotistical. It sounds arrogant. No, it's, it's Bible. That is the word. And if we ever could learn that that's exactly how God feels about us, could you imagine the confidence that we would walk in? The sense of, uh, you know, we say it's entitlement. That's exactly what it is. We are entitled brats. And you ought to say praise the Lord because that's exactly the way God sees us. That's exactly how God has made us to be. You know, you can't, steal something from somebody who just gives it away. We have this idea that we sneak in and just snatch a little goodie every once in a while from God without him knowing it, you know. We got over on him. And so Jesus said, you know, if you see somebody that's without a coat, give him yours. If he takes your coat, then give him your cloak too so that nobody can be a thief. You can't take something that God wants you to have. You can't feel cheapened or less value because you're receiving grace and you're doing something that you think you shouldn't be doing or that somebody else... Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we should go out and start shooting people in the street and getting crazy. I'm just saying everybody fails. But it's not, you're not a failure. You're a human. God calls it weakness. And in that weakness, his strength is made perfect. Amen? Ephesians 3.16. You know, I'm, I'll never apologize for this because I'll tell you, I've, I've spent enough time with people over the years to see that people, good people, people that love God, people that uh, are, are born again, but they're not perfect. And they're, they're paranoid because they know others will judge them. I'm fine. I mean, I know that about me. And God wants us to know that stuff you're all freaked out about, I'm not. You're the one having the problem. You're the one worrying. You're the one struggling. You're the one trying to sort it all out and figure it all out. Just know that I love you, that I am a good God, that I am for you, and no matter what we got to go through, we'll go through it together. It'll be okay. You are accepted in the beloved. Who's that? Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And we are in Christ as believers, and God says, I've accepted you in Christ. He's accepted you in Christ, not a... He's not confused that you're Jesus. He knows you're you. But he sees you just like he sees Jesus. Perfect. Beloved. Accepted. Amen?
that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Amen? He wants to grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now, God doesn't dispense power like we put medicine on a sore. Amen? But from his presence within you, he releases his power. In your weakest place, he releases power. Amen? If you wanted an analogy, Old Testament was kind of like the opposite of that. The Spirit would come on people momentarily, temporarily. Amen? It was like putting salve on a burn. Right? But New Covenant, he doesn't operate that way. Everything comes from out of us. Out of this weak vessel that couldn't, amen, receive the Holy Spirit or have God present internally in them, he'd have to come on them from time to time and overshadow them. But under this new covenant, God has, because he has removed all sin, he comes and dwells in us. Now we know God cannot be in the presence of sin. So if you don't see yourself without sin, you better rethink your theology here about who's living in you. Because if God's in you, you are the Holy of Holies now. You are the temple of God. You say, oh, that can't be possible. Yeah, it's exactly what God has done. That's why He came with a new covenant, a better covenant, so that He could actually live in us instead of just around us. So that it wasn't any longer based on us, but it was based on Him so that everybody would be able to see the grace of God in our human lives, our faulty, weak lives, and God would be glorified because His power is really... Let me ask you something. If you talk to people that are unsaved, their biggest concern is that God won't accept them. Why do they feel that way? Because they know most religious people won't accept them. The only reflection they have of God is us. So if they see us, and instead of us trying to pretend like we're perfect, and we are willing to admit that we all have flaws, whatever they might be, it doesn't matter what they are, everybody's are different, but we all got them. They may be more, uh, or let me put it this way, God may seem to be more approachable to them. And it would also take away a lot of the, the sense of hypocrisy that people have towards the church. Amen. When we give the impression that we are without flaws, without failures, and then they catch us in a moment of weakness, amen, then they think you're a hypocrite when in fact you're just a human being. We need to be more honest with ourselves so that we can be more honest with them. Hallelujah. Praise God. What God wants to give us is rest. Rest. And that's what you can expect as you look to His power in your weakness. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 4, 7, last scripture. We'll wrap it up with this. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, we have this power in our weakness. Why? So that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. God's got a pretty good plan, and he doesn't deviate from it, even if we don't understand it. He's given us his spirit in us, in this weak, failing, faulty, imperfect vessel. Why? For me to be glorified? So I can say, look what I've done since I got born again, praise the Lord. No. So that people, when they do look at me and they see, man, he's not perfect. They'll see a God who is perfect and who loves me with my imperfection. Who gave himself for me. 
so that his power, his, the excellency of his glory could be revealed in this earthen vessel. Praise the Lord. Embrace your weakness. And from that place, from that place of understanding, God's power in you is launched. You'll do more supernatural things without any trying, without any effort, by embracing your own weakness and trusting in his power so that when people look on you, they'll say, God is working there. God must be a good God. He must be a loving God. Maybe there is a chance for me with my problems, with my faults. Maybe God really does love me. Maybe God really does want to move in my life and operate in my life. Praise the Lord. When you see that reality, when you experience it, just give him the glory. When God does something for you and you go, like most of us have, whoa, didn't see that coming. Not the way I've been acting here the last couple of days. Just give him the glory. Just realize it wasn't a luck. It wasn't fluke. It wasn't because you did something right. It wasn't because you got it all together and figured it all out. It's because God just wants to bless you. He's not freaked out about your frailty. He's not freaked out about your weakness. It's that weakness that draws God. Our humanity. Praise the Lord. It's, it's the life that God has always wanted you to live. The life of grace. The life of total dependence on him. He just said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because it's not me that does the works. It's the Father that's in me. He was speaking of his humanity. He said, I'm, 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 I'm living this life, not just for your salvation, not just so you'll escape hell, but so that you can see how God operates in a human. Amen? Jesus was a human being. He didn't operate as God. Any miracle that he did, he did it by the power of God, not by his own strength or his own ability. And you say, well, yeah, but Jesus was without sin. Well, let me blow your mind one more time before we close this morning. <laughs> so are you, if you're born again. You say, oh, but I, I did that. Talk to the hand. You know, I'm not listening. Praise the Lord. That's what God says. I've declared you innocent. Amen. I've declared you perfect in my sight. I have committed myself to you. I'm willing to show the world how much I love you. Look, here he is. Here she is. My favorites. Perfect. In the blood. Because his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Can you say praise the Lord? Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen, amen. We, we just have, a, as human beings, we have a tendency to try to overthink, figure everything out. Some things are just to be enjoyed. You know, I, 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 Sunday or, th or Thursday, Thanksgiving, we were at my youngest daughter's. I don't know what all I ate. I quit even trying to identify it after the first few things on the plate. Just tasted good. Amen. And I just kept eating it. Praise the Lord. I don't know how they did any of it. Now, I could fix a hamburger. I can cook a few things if I got a recipe. But I'm looking at this turkey and the ham and the potatoes and I don't know what all it was and everything else that I was eating, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, everything. I don't know how it was. I don't know how it was made, but it didn't stop me from enjoying every bit of it. it I don't know how, how much time went into it. I don't know how much work. I don't know how and why and what size pan and how much water or anything. All I know is, man, it tasted good, and I just ate it. And I ate it till I couldn't eat anymore. And that's basically what God is telling us. You don't have to figure this out. Just come and dine. Just come and enjoy it. Experience the grace. And you'll, the result will be you will learn to love me in ways that you could have never loved me otherwise because there's nothing, there's nothing between us and God. His arms are open for us. 
and he just wants to embrace us so that we can embrace his power. He embraces our weakness so that we might embrace his power. Say praise the Lord one more time. Praise, praise the Lord. God bless you all. Hallelujah. He's a great God. It's not a cliche. It's a reality. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy the week. Stay safe in Jesus. Amen.